us about the word restoration, restore. And that's our theme for this year. So if you think about restore, it's about completeness, wholeness, restoration. It's to be undivided. So I want you to come with me to the book of Luke. And we'll be reading from chapter 17, verse 11. So Luke chapter 17, from verse 11. Everyone got it, I believe? Righto. So the lepers cleansed. Luke 17, verse 11. Now it happened as he went, this is Jesus, went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. We're talking about leprosy here. Leprosy. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at, the, at his feet, giving him thanks as he was a Samaritan. See that? He was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, listen to this, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Once again, a foreigner because the other nine were Jews and this guy was a Samaritan. And verse 19, and Jesus said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole. Let's just close our eyes as we pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We know that your word is spirit and it is life. So Father God, we said that our hearts are receptive. I pray, Father God, that your word will take root in our hearts and that it will produce the fruit upward in our lives. That we will not just be hearers, but also doers of what you speak to us this morning. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the voice speaking behind my voice. And that revelation is going to come to us this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So when Jesus said to this man, right at the end of this part of scripture, your faith has made you whole. That's the Greek word sozo, which means to be complete, to be restored, to be undivided. So how to be restored and to be made whole? Now, leprosy can be likened to sin in many ways. And there is a lot of parallels of what leprosy has an effect on the human body and on a person in the same way as sin has an effect as we allow that to fester in our lives. The decay that it brings. Okay? So whenever we talk about, when I'm going to break this up and talk about leprosy, I want you to be conscious of the fact that the effect that leprosy has had, we're going to look at what leprosy is all about. What it looks like. The effect that it has. I want you to be mindful of the parallel of what sin has 
in our lives. Okay? So you all got that? So there's parallels of the effect that leprosy has in correlation to the way that sin brings the same sort of decay to our lives. So 10 lepers, all suffering the same every day. There would be a part of them that dies slowly each day. There's a part of themselves every day that they would bury. Every single day. And in the final stages, the external extremities, it comes to the point where they would lose limbs, like nose, and like cotton-like blindness in the eyes. They'll lose ears, fingers, toes. There's sores that's always seeping. There's always scabbing, scabs on the skin. So you think about this, 10 of these guys, 10 of these guys that's got leprosy, they cried out to Jesus. A decay every day. There's a part of themselves that they bury, a part of themselves that they lose. When you were a leper, you were an outcast from society. You were estranged from your family. I want you to think about this. No hope for tomorrow. There's nothing to look forward to. These 10 guys, nothing to look forward to, to for tomorrow. No dreams. Scavengers like wild dogs that can't even take care of themselves. This is who these guys were. Having leprosy. No invitation to anyone. There's no celebration of a birthday. There's no parties that they go to. No children. They're excluded from human touch. Ten lepers. Zombie-like creatures that inhabits the nighttime. It's something that starts as a small little speck on the eyelid. Something that is so unnoticeable. But then if left the same way as sin, untreated, look at the decay that it brings. It brings about death. And every day is a process where there is a bit more of yourself that dies, that you bury every day, every day. One of the first effects of this disease is that you lose, it kills the nerve endings. Leprosy. It kills the nerve endings and a lot of them apparently had died as a result of infections that they sustained where they either pricked themselves with a splinter and as a result of it got an infection, but they never knew it because they couldn't feel it. You see, they lose that sense of touch, of feeling. You see, the first time you do it, you feel bad, but a second time and a third time, and the more you do it, you lose the feeling. Can you see how dangerous it is? How dangerous it is if we... Do not deal with it appropriately. So you bury again a part of who you used to be. Horrible, horrible, a horrible disease. Sin is horrible. Imagine 10 of these lepers. Their ears and their noses had decayed, it's gone. Some of them to the point where their lips, their lips were gone. They lost their lips and have their gums and teeth exposed. I want you to listen to this and remember what I'm saying. They lose limbs, ears, nose, their lips, have their teeth and their gums exposed. Mummified skin. 
You think what that does to your self-confidence, your self-image? Remember the parallel of leprosy and sin and the effect that that has on a person. Ten of them approaching Jesus. Now somewhere they had to have heard about the Messiah. They had to have heard something about Jesus. Otherwise they would not have cried out to him. Amen? So they might have heard about another leper. Remember the other leper that fell and worshipped at Jesus' feet? So they might have been saying among one another, Wow, Jesus, Jesus, he's the, the one that can touch the untouchable. That's who he is for us. Because they lack that in their lives. You think about the state that these guys were in. They've lost everything. No emotion, no feeling, mummified skin, missing fingers, walking around in pain because of a loss of toes, scabs, sores that keeps on pouring out. I want you to get that picture. The same way sin does that to us. They approach Jesus and cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on us. Have you paid attention to what Jesus did? If there's one thing that Jesus cannot resist, it's lepers' worship. Now, what is lepers' worship? What does that look like? Does a leper go and worship him and say, Oh, thank you, God, that I have lost my nose, that I no longer have ears, and for this cotton-like blindness in my eyes. No. Lepers' worship is a worship that's rendered unto God, not for what he has done, but for who he is. And Jesus cannot resist that. Jesus cannot resist that. That's why Jesus went to them. He attended to them. For many, it's when God, you know, ticked them off, ticked off all the boxes of all their hopes and all of their dreams and everything that they ever wanted. And then they become willing and enthusiastic worshippers. But every now and then we have to come and we have to engage in leper's worship and worship him for who he is and not for what he can do or for what he's done but for who he is. We have to be a people that say we're going to worship you for the rest of our days like that. I'm going to worship you for who you are because we're going to see you're going to see there's so much embedded in the Word of God. And we have to take the time that when we read the Word for the Holy Spirit to reveal unto us, to make this Logos, Rhema, within our hearts, to make it the living Word of God. And we're going to see how essential, how powerful, and how we need to worship Him like that. I've just got to find my place again over here. But you're used to it already, aren't you? So how do I do that? I haven't received the answer yet, God. Oh, but I'm going to worship you. I haven't landed that contract yet, but God, I'm going to worship you. God, I'm still going through this and experiencing this, but... In spite of that, I'm going to worship you. I did not get the deal, but I'm going to worship you. I haven't got my breakthrough yet, but I'm going to worship you. This is the cry 
this is the stance that we take is that it doesn't matter, Father God, I'm going to worship you for who you are, for you never change. God cannot resist leper worship. He loves it. That's what he's into. Now in verse 14, if you go back to verse 14, let's just read that one again. Verse 14, so when Jesus saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Show yourself to the priest. This is not an issue that a counselor can fix. This is not an issue that a psychiatrist is going to be able to fix. This is an issue and you only can go to one place. There's only one place that you can go and attend for this issue. You have to go to the temple. You need to get into the house of God under the anointed teaching. Hallelujah. Amen? So this is the remedy. This is what he told them. This is where you need to go. You need to go to the temple and present yourself to the priest. You might come in here and be ticked off about something. Could be coming in here and be angry. Angry with God. You could be coming in here filled with sorrow. Your heart broken. But we come to the right place and we come and we take, we take our stance. In spite of that, in spite of that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to worship you. I'm going to worship you for who you are. In spite of the hurt, in spite of the setback, in spite of the fact that I haven't landed that yet, I'm still in pursuit of my dream. I'm still going to worship you. That's what he's after. There's something you can do if the enemy had you bury a part of you every day, a part of your dreams, something you always wanted to do, another piece, and another piece of you dying. And you have a daily funeral of your hopes and your dreams. There's only one place you can go and be made whole and be restored. We too have to go to the temple. It has not changed. My feet should hasten to the temple where I come and I render unto him lepers worship. That's what we can do. And they went. They went, and as they went, they were healed. Now you think about this. This is what we got to do. We got to take this now, and we have to picture what this must have been like. The Bible doesn't say how long they've been suffering this condition. But you think how many times they've been thinking and dreaming If I can just hug my mama again. You think it's something that they thought of? If I can just celebrate my birthday with my brother and my sister, my mom and my dad. If I can just kiss my wife again and hold a face in my hands. The torment that they had gone through every day, thinking about what they've lost, and they had to bury that every day of their lives. And yet Jesus says, go and present yourself to the priests. Go to the temple. And as they walked, as they went, You think about that. They'd be looking at one another and looking at and going, oh, the sores aren't pouring anymore. 
They probably took their clothes off and checked themselves and went, Oh, I'm healed. I am healed. They were that overcome by joy and gladness by this miracle that they ran home. They couldn't wait. They couldn't wait to get home. I can see the mothers just in the kitchen seeing a boy for the first time in 10 years just running down the pathway and she's dropping the dishes and running towards him and embracing her son again for the first time in 10 years. Think about the celebrations as brothers and sisters gather around them. A big massive group hug and the sound of tears and laughter of joy just filling the air. Nine of them boys had done that. But one chose not to. Can you see the nine running? Not having touched their family members. Kissed them and embracing them for such a long time. And one of the ten did not. Only one turned straight around and went back to Jesus. And then with a loud voice, he thanked God. And then he fell on his face at Jesus' feet. And he rendered unto him worship. Something happened to him that did not happen to the other nine. Only the one turned around and went back. And look at this. Jesus says to the one that turned around and came back to him, something that he did not say to the others. I want you to, take, to come back with me to verse 19. And this is the one that came back. Listen to this. And Jesus said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has restored you completely. It means complete with no lacking parts. All together, unbroken, undivided, undamaged. You know what happened? Now I want you to picture this. As this man fell on his, oh sorry, as he cried out with a loud voice thanking God and then falling down at the feet of Jesus on his face and worshiping him. And Jesus says to him, arise. As he arose and Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. What do you think happened? There's something that happened to him that didn't happen to the other nine. So if Jesus says your faith has made you whole, your faith has restored you, what does that look like? As this man was on the uprise, his missing nose grew back. The limbs that he had missing, fingers came out of his hand. There were toes that probably protruded through whatever it is, bandages that he had around his feet. The milkiness in his eyes had disappeared and you could see the blue color of his eyes come through as he could see again. This is what happened to this guy. But that not happened to the other nine. You see, the other nine were healed, but they were not made whole. So they still carried the signs of what they have been through. Missing nose, missing ear, blindness in the eye, missing toes. It stopped to bring decay to them, but they still carried what they went through. You could see the effects of what they've been through. But this man, oh, praise God, this man has been made whole. He's been restored. 
when you look at him, his mom, let's think about when his mama looked at him. Is, 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 that really, is that really you? Is that really you? Fully restored. Think about that. This is what God wants to do in our lives. A lot of people come to our churches and they look at us stand here singing and making music and preaching. They look at them. They're finely dressed. They look fine. What do they know about? Bankruptcy. Look at them in all their fine clothes and all happy. What do they know about abuse? Look at them. What do they know about divorce? What do they know about addiction? People coming in, looking on, and seeing this. Worshipping Jesus with a smile on our face, with a, with a, a spring in our step. What do they know about a broken heart? Look at them. It's not that we cannot associate with any of those things. It's just that when we decided to worship Jesus with leper's worship, He restored us. It's now just that we do not look like what we've been through. Because we have been restored. Hallelujah. Because I've been restored. You think about the three boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Abednego. They've been thrown into the fiery furnace. And King Nebuchadnezzar in the chapter 6 of Daniel. He said, make the fire seven times hotter. That even the guys that threw them in, bound, that they were consumed by the fire and then King Nebuchadnezzar looked on and then you could see hang on a minute there's not three but there's four in the fire there's four in the fire and all that got burned was what they were bound with and they were dancing and then King Nebuchadnezzar said but the fourth one looks like the son of man Woo! praise God and then when he said, okay, well, they ought to be coming out. They come out. He gave glory to God. But the Bible says that not one hair on their body was scorched and not even the smell of smoke to be found on the garments. You see, there's not a sign of what it is that they've been through because they've been restored. They worship Jesus. They were with Jesus. As long as we stick to Jesus, we're going to be fine. We are going to be fine. He's the one that restores. Can I get our worship team to please come? Whew. If you smoke three packets of cigarettes, my, my grandfather was a chain smoker. So he lit up the next... The next one was the one that he already had in his mouth. And I remember he would smoke two packets of, of was it, 30s a day. 60 cigarettes a day. And my grandfather looked exactly like one that had been smoking 60 cigarettes a day. Of consistently doing that. You see, you will eventually become, you will show the signs of what it is that you are going through if we do not get restored. It's essential for us. We are still to be sanctified. We cannot play with anything that the world has got on offer. The same as leprosy that starts with a little speck on someone's eye. 
It looks so insignificant, not noticeable. But we do not engage what the world has got on offer. We have to engage in lepers' worship. Do not let a part of myself die today. A part of my dreams and my hope and my joy. So I'm not going to engage in that, but I'm rather going to engage in leper worship. Because that's where full restoration is. That's where full restoration is. When King David gathered all of the materials for the rebuild of the temple, God said to King David that he can't build a temple, but his son ought to do it. Remember? So you think after the temple had been built, and those two men separately have to take you on a bit of a, a gander and a walk through the palace. What would he have said? What would Solomon have said? Oh, you see right there? They've used this many tons of gold to do that. The silver over here, guess what? So many shackles of silver just to make that. Oh, look at the beauty of the cypress over here that these columns had been made of. Just spectacular. Just the workmanship. Just look at this. King David, if he has taken you, what would that be like? He was a man with blood on his hands. That's why he could not build. That's why he could not build it. He'd come home with a bloodied face of someone whom he had killed. And then, he'll just grab a harp and start playing the harp. How strange is that? So this man take you on a journey and he would say, oh yeah, you see, the stones that that priest, that breastplate, you see the ruby, that red one? I had to go and pluck it out of this false god that they had when we got that off the Moabites. I had to go and pluck it out of the eye of this false god that they made. And I brought that. Look where it is now. The gold? Yeah, that gold. We went into here and then we fought for three days. And we got all the spoils back and we brought it back and that we put here to rebuild. This is completely different, isn't it? But King David, he rendered lepers worship unto God. He rendered lepers worship unto God. What's my worship look like? What am I allowing in my life that brings about the decay, blindness, a loss of a part of myself that I have to bury every day. And unless they encountered Jesus, it would not have been dealt with appropriately. Today we have opportunity for a turnaround. 
no more, God. I'm no more putting this off. I'm no more waiting until this dream becomes a reality before I'm going to engage as an enthusiastic, willing worshiper. But today, I choose to worship you for who you are. I'm no longer going to wait and wait and put it off until this dream becomes reality. Until I've received what I want from you. Until you answered this prayer and opened this door and I landed this contract. But now, God, I choose. I choose to worship you for who you are. So right now, we're going to worship. You are in the right place because we are in the temple. And Jesus is here. So not even the fire could put a stop to those boys' worship. There is nothing if that could not stop them. You think about, you think about Legion. Remember when Jesus came with the boat to that shore that day? Legion. A legion, in the Roman terms, is 6,000 soldiers. So you think about he had 6,000 demons possessing him. And when that little boat hit that shore and Jesus stepped out, legion, what did he do? Ran to him. He ran to him. And he fell at his feet. If 6,000 demons could not stop, Worship unto Jesus. What are you allowing to try and put a stop to you? What am I allowing to bring a stop to that worship? Because someone said something to me? Because I had my heart broken? Because Jesus never gave me that deal that I prayed for? What's What's putting a stop to the leper worship in my life? Because today is the day. It might be the last time that I stand here and preach the gospel. For someone, it might be the last time that you hear it. How long will we put it off? Let us worship him. And allow the Holy Spirit to be the after preacher of what you've heard. Because he would have been talking. He would have been talking behind my voice. And he would have highlighted something in your heart, in your life. I'm not here to tell you what you must do. But I'm urging you by the grace of God that we just respond to the Holy Spirit. Just to what he said.